2008, a group of women were determined to bring something different to the world of women's sport in Winnipeg, Manitoba. The group started a flat track roller derby league that welcomes women of all shapes, sizes, backgrounds, and skill levels in the sport. Over 70 league members now make up the Winnipeg Roller Derby League's three home teams and two travel teams. Any type of woman is given the chance to participate in the exciting and adrenaline-packed sport. Even though there are challenges that usually come up with playing the sport, its players often find these are worth it to be part of roller derby and the community they've truly come to love. So how does one define roller derby? It's a legitimate sport. There's a, a rule set. Uh, we aren't allowed to fight. We aren't allowed to pull each other's hair. There's no tripping, uh, no punching. But we do hit each other and sometimes it hurts, but mostly it's just a lot of fun. It's a sport, uh, but it's also a culture. So, I mean, the actual breakdown, it's 10 people on roller skates, four people are playing offense and defense for each team, there's two jammers, they start behind, they race through the pack, race around the track, and then come through and score a point for every person they pass. Roller derby is like no other sport out there. Its players can have a range of body types and skills and still be great players. Many women find the image of their own bodies change after they've taken up the sport. I have, have hips, I have thighs and in roller derby I can use that power. I've got girls who are twice my size can skate backwards better than I can walk forwards in shoes. Smaller, taller, wider, thinner, every one of those brings different aspects to roller derby. I take a lot of pride in the things I can do. I couldn't skate at all when I started derby. I couldn't even stand up on skates. The roller derby revival of the early 2000s is often seen as a reaction to the changing roles of women in society and third wave feminism. Many modern women feel the sport is empowering to women. We are pretty much the only sport out there that is completely run by women. Roller derby kind of caters to an outsider community and uh, women with strong opinions, as unfortunate as that is, are sometimes an outsider community. For a lot of women, it is very feminist to test the full physical capabilities of their bodies in a way that men get to do quite often with sport. Women's bodies are disciplined to be like small and docile and quiet. There is something inherently feminist in taking those ideas of what women's bodies should do or what they can do and basically doing the thing that is the most opposite of that. Because of roller derby's all-inclusive nature, the sport often attracts and supports members of the LGBT community. People that may have not ever liked a sport they're gonna like derby because we're not the every other cookie cutter sport. I would say anywhere close to 50% of the top derby athletes in the world are like openly queer. And uh, for me, that was kind of part of the draw. It was like, oh, this is somewhere where, you know, it's okay to like be a lesbian and be an athlete. I wasn't out really when I started derby with anyone other than my close friends. My family didn't know. Derby was the first community that I came into where right from day one, uh, I was honest. There's a, a collective, an international collective that I'm a part of called the Vigine Regime. You know, it's a group for queer athletes and also for people who support queer athletes, which is pretty much the whole derby community. We've got thousands of people kind of all over. There's chapters of the Vigine Regime in like 15 or 20 countries that have really big roller derby presences. Um, so we're looking at, you know, kind of trying to take this cool thing that everyone's doing on their own and see if we can build it up into a, a bigger community. Wipeouts and injuries are common in the world of roller derby. Players often have killer bruises to show off as a result. Sometimes, however, the injuries are more serious. My first attempt at, at uh, fresh meat, I sprained my ankle. I broke my wrist a few times. A really nasty shin injury. I hit my hip and all of my leg just turned purple and black. I definitely would consider my broken ankle to be my worst injury so far. I'm going to have um, effects from that for the rest of my life. I started physio at the end of June and we had a, a game coming up in September and I wanted to skate in that game and uh, I worked really hard and I was able to, to play. It was one of the proudest moments 
in my life, which is probably kind of sad, but it was. <laughs> Other times, the main challenge of playing roller derby is having to balance a profession, relationships, and the often all-consuming life of playing on a roller derby league. I think my family, it's a double-edged sword. It's like, they love that I love it, but it does impact them because they don't get to see me as much. Between going to practices and the events and doing all the stuff in between, the meetings, it is it completely changes your life dynamic and your family dynamic. A derby widow is the uh, husband or partner or wife of a derby skater. The person who's left at home is uh, very similar to a widow because they're, they're alone while their partner is out doing derby. He was the one who actually encouraged me to really go out for it and give it a shot. And he's attended all of my games, so that's a pretty big deal because I don't go to his hockey games. I guess I was one of the first uh, derby widows, as they like to call us. I think it was Michelle's uh, first or second bout, and uh, I was going to surprise her. I was all excited, and I was excited to see her skate and stuff. So I painted a big uh, portage of meme all over my belly. Everyone was like cheering for him with his like stomach, because it's kind of furry. And then the paint was all mixed in with the, the hair, and it was awesome. But now, now I made this shirt instead, and I, I roll with this instead. I hate the derby, which I made, and I'm actually, maybe can sell them to other widows. That was kind of uh, his saying, like, I'd be like, oh, I have to, I've got a derby meeting tonight, and I gotta go, I'll, I'll be home at like nine, and he's like, no, you won't, you'll be home at like midnight, because there's no such thing as a tour derby meeting. And I, I do hate the derby, and I love it, I love hate relationship, so. I mean, sometimes I could say I love the derby, but then not very often, mostly I hate the derby. None of us knew when we started the league how much of a lifestyle this was and how much it was going to take over our lives. So there was really no way for me to tell him, oh, I'm going to be busy five nights a week. And when we start a family, it's going to change too. I have to choose family over derby. I have to choose family over derby. But until then, it's, it's always going to be derby over, over anybody. Since the sport of roller derby has such a wide appeal, it attracts athletic women of all ages. Most women pick this up in their late 20s, early 30s. I think it, I'm doing this at 39. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm pretty impressed with what I've accomplished. I am in my mid-30s, which is kind of late for picking up a new sport. And my recovery time certainly isn't what it was when I was in my 20s, or even some of our younger skaters. After a really challenging day or a boot camp, the next morning are as fresh as ever. And you know, I spent the day before in the bath with ibuprofen. New people coming in automatically look to you as a mentor. They don't really see that you're still working really hard every single time. Derby is was the only sport that I really enjoy. Like, I've played soccer and basketball in gym class and they're just not that appealing to me. She started skating and it became a thing that we did together, which I think was really important. Uh, with her going into her, her adolescence. We're starting to get skaters coming in from our junior leagues for 18, 19, and they've already been playing a few years. And I think as derby goes on 10, 20 years from now, you're going to see people who've been playing since childhood. With all the things that roller derby players must give up to play the game, they keep coming back. Between the community they join and the friendships they make, their teammates become a second family to them, and the sport of roller derby, a second home. I have a tattoo that says uh, Derby Saves. Uh, that's sort of my personal derby mantra. I went through a lot of like challenging times while being involved in derby, and derby was the uh, anchor point, was the one thing that was constant. I have friendships I feel are the best friendships I've ever had, and they span all across Canada. And even some girls that I only played with for a few months, I still feel like they're sisters to me. If you go anywhere, anywhere in Canada, you've got a, a family, or anywhere in the world, really. There's very few cities, major cities, that don't have derby leagues anymore. And you know, if you're visiting somewhere, you throw them an email, and the league takes you in with open arms. It's more than a sport. It's more than a hobby. It's more than um, exercise. It's who you are. So I think I'm uh, in my final stages of my derby life, and uh, it's been a big adjustment. It's kind of the part of derby that no one tells you about. There's no book for it, no manual, how to get out of Derby. All these women that you would have never been lucky enough to meet join Derby for one reason or another. They're missing something in their life or they just want to gain something new. 
So you surround yourself with these incredible women and you're just, you're so lucky to be a part of it. I feel like I'm a completely different person in, in all positive ways since I was smart enough to strap skates on.